I'll be honest with you. I, I came up here about a few months ago and said to them, I'd like to do something with Jess. Okay, uh, for 34 years, I've been a public educator. Uh, I was a teacher for 25 years, uh, middle school, high school. I even did something really crazy, and that was I went overseas for two years, and I taught at a place called Seoul International School, which is in Seoul, South Korea. Um, probably one of the best experiences of my life. Came back here, uh, spent the last nine years as an elementary school principal, a K to nine assist, a K to eight system principal in two different places than a high school principal. Uh, to be honest with you, COVID was kind of my last straw. I, I, I was so exhausted at the end. Uh, my wife looked at me and said, can you do me a favor? And I said, what's that? And she said, would you please retire? <laughs> and so, you know, and there's this great saying that when your life is a mess, that you need a woman in order to help prop the man, the man up. And so in chess, the queen always protects the king. And so in my family, my queen has always protected the king here. So, and, but, um, so what I do now is, again, the idea of going into retirement and doing nothing. Yeah, no, it's not going to work for me. And so it's one of these things about being careful what you wish for. And so I had two teachers that went to this um, they went to a four-day workshop, okay, and what they learned was how to play chess, but how to try to incorporate it into what happens in school. And so I was really intrigued because I will say that in every school where I was a teacher, I always started a chess club. Uh, we worked through a kind of a curriculum that I kind of came up with as far as learning how to play the game learning how to take chess notation. Um, a couple of my heroes, one of my biggest heroes, and I'm hoping that I get the chance to maybe meet her next fall, is uh, Judith Polgar. Um, if none of you know Judith Polgar, she was the youngest grandmaster of the game of chess. She, learned, she became grandmaster at 14. So she was playing men that were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, and very consistently beating them. And when my, when my students were able to understand chess notation is that we worked out a lot of her games, okay? Just because she had a very elegant way that she moved, but also the logic of it. And that's really, for me, this is what chess is all about. It, chess is about thinking, okay? It's about analyzing the situation that you have. It's coming to a decision, okay, I'm gonna do this Watch what your partner, the person across the table does for you. Uh-oh, now I've got to reanalyze everything. Because understand, folks, this game is a conversation. It's a conversation between the two players. And it's being played out on a map board that has very consistent rules. There's do's and don'ts. And the playing field is level. You know, I like dice games. I grew up playing Risk. Uh, I grew up playing, kind of freaked my father out a little bit, but a game called Panzer Blitz. I played Panzer Leader. In college, I played this game called Squad Leader. For any of you that know computers, Squad Leader is close combat. That's, that game series is based on Squad Leader. It's all dice. You roll. So there's an element of chance. This game takes chance all the way. This is about you analyzing, thinking, making a decision, learning from the, if it's a mistake, you try to learn from it, okay? So what I would like to propose to everybody, one, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people that are here. This is awesome, okay? And I want, and at some point I may ask, and at least ask the adults, because do you know what has been the biggest thing for the game of chess? It was a Netflix series, Queen's Gambit. In the United States, before the Queen's Gambit came out, chess sales were flat. I mean, like flat. After that series came out, 500% increased in the amount of people buying chess. Chess.com regularly kind of tracks how many people are playing. And on a, any given day, there's close to 750,000 people playing chess. Not necessarily good chess, but they're playing chess, okay? Now, 
what I'm proposing to everybody is, and this is what I'm willing to do, I have basically a curriculum that will break the game down into manageable sections so every, you get a chance to learn how everything pulls together. Okay, my curriculum is based on the idea of eight weeks. And so what I would like to offer to everybody is I'm more than happy to be here basically for the next seven Thursdays. Okay, um, and we will walk through all the pieces, we will walk through how they move, all the special moves, and then what I'm hoping is, is by about the seventh week or so, is that we begin playing full games. But I have some twists on those full games because my whole goal, and I, and I want to be right up front with everybody, my whole goal is I doubt I'm going to create the next Grand Master. I may. Because I may spark someone's interest and they begin reading about it. They begin doing the things that I did as a kid. And that was, is I learned, no lie, we had, a, we had a box with a game in it. I turned it over and there were the rules. Okay, read the rules. All right, this seems pretty simple. And it was a rainy day. I was in seventh grade. My friend and I were looking for something to do. And so we started doing it. I thought this was cool. I was into it. And so I went to the library, got a book. Matter of fact, my first book I got was called Winning Chess. I, re I still remember it to this day. Went home, started looking through it pulled out the chessboard my folks had, started basically working my way through it. My friends thought I was cheating, okay? What it was, was I just, I got excited and decided to learn more. Now, to, to guess to put the bow on the end of the story was, is that when I went into high school and got into the chess club there at high school, I promptly lost the first 12 games that I played, okay? I have probably in my lifetime lost more chess games than I've won. Okay, however, the benefit that I've got from chess is the ability to do critical thinking, to analyze, to evaluate, to make decisions, and then have to go from the, what that decision is, okay? So, before we're done tonight, if whoever is interested in the idea of coming back and going through the, the eight weeks with me, if you could just leave me a name so I know I mean, that way I can make sure, because tonight I brought in a whole bunch of extra stuff. And this way I know how much I need to bring. Okay? But that's what I offer to you folks. All right? Because um, I'm more than happy to do it. And the long and short also is, is get, I got a part-time job now. I'm working for a group called Chess and Education. Um, I don't know if any, in the state of New Hampshire, they started a thing called the Granite Gambit. Does that ring any bells for anybody? Oh, God, we haven't done good publicity then. Okay, so what Graham Gambit is, real quickly, is we as an organization, we run trainings mostly in July and August where we bring teachers in, librarians, and like I was saying to someone, most of the teachers we have actually are elementary school teachers that come in. We have some middle school teachers, few high school teachers. What we do is we teach them how to play the game of chess, through a mini game format that they can do in their class. Because you know that to play a full game of chess is gonna take a long time. And teachers don't have that time during the day. But during the day, they can do 10 or 15 minute mini games. And then what we, what we encourage them and urge them to do is talk about the thinking that went on. Because what we find is, is that this is a great game to teach you how to do those analysis, those evaluations, and things like that. You know, and as a classroom teacher, I was a social studies teacher, so I gotta remember to keep my mouth shut here shortly because we talk too much. But the biggest, my biggest struggle at times was getting my students to look at material and then to analyze and evaluate it because they just don't practice it enough. This is an easy way to practice, okay? So, like I said, I'm more than happy to be here for the next eight weeks. Okay, and we can walk through a program of this is what we're going to do. Okay, so think about it, and I don't need an answer now, but think about it. Um, do any of you know about the history of chess at all? For the librarians, if they're listening, there's over 209,000 books and magazines that have been written about chess. Of all the sports, now notice how I said this, all the sports, 
chess is considered a sport. Of all the sports that we know of, this is the sport that has mo that been most heavily documented, heavily analyzed, and probably heavily preached at. <laughs> okay? This is, there's only one game older than this, and that's backgammon. The earliest backgammon we have found started around 300 AD. It was nowhere near what backgammon is now, but they can trace its roots. This game right here started around 600 AD in India. And actually, the story is, and I'm not, I don't, this is a story I know, so if I'm wrong, I'm more than happy to admit I'm wrong. Basically what happened is this ruler of a princedom wanted his kids to be good rulers when he was gone. And so he asked his advisors, develop a game that will teach my kids basically how to think, how to lead, how to act. The genesis of chess was born. Chess, so it started in India. Thanks to trade, chess moved to Persia. Persia we know today is modern day Iran. And so roughly about the 10th century, so about 1000 AD, the early chess lands basically in Persia. Now, <coughs> does anybody know the world's most famous trade route in Asia? The yeah, the Silk Road. And what we know is, is the game of chess spread on both directions of the Silk Road. China and Japan have developed their own versions of chess. Please don't ask me to pronounce the names. One of the things, this is my super talent, folks. I'm really good at massacring names. Okay, so China and Japan have developed their own chess games. And then chess moved into the Middle East, which for us, this is really important because from the Middle East, this would have been the time of the, Muslim, the Islamic Empire, the first really empire after Muhammad had passed away. That game moved through, again, trade routes into Europe. Now, the European kings and queens thought chess was great. Matter of fact, for you young men, the only time that you could be in a room by yourself with a young lady is if you were playing chess. That's the only time you could. Otherwise than that, you always had, you know, you had people around you. The thing was, though, is the Roman Catholic Church initially did not like chess because there was a dice component to it. I've tried playing medieval chess. I will not subject you to that. Okay, it is hard and it is complicated. These games would take three to four hours, folks, to play one game. And so what happened was, is a number of the pieces changed. So in other words, this piece right here, which actually should be right there, the bishop, one, became called the bishop. The Roman, the church liked that, especially where if you got them in the right position, they flanked the king and the queen. Okay, because in medieval days, guess what, folks? The bishop was probably the only person that could read and write. What was it called before the it's been called a number of different names. Um, the Turkish name came um, from, was vizier. And a vizier in the Turkish form of government was an advisor, same as the bishop, okay? Um, the queen, this young lady right here, initially she could only move one square. In Europe they changed it and they basically rewrote the rules to give the queen a whole lot more power. And by far, she is the most powerful piece on the board. However, <coughs> the queen cannot do it alone. There is no time in chess that you can checkmate your opponent just with the queen herself. She always needs someone working with her. And that's one of the best things that I like about the game of chess, is that subconsciously it's teaching cooperation. You're looking for the best combinations. The other changes revolved around pawns. Pawns are probably the most frequently overlooked piece on the chessboard. Okay? They are vital because they dictate how the game is going to play. 
because they will channel attacks. You can protect with them, unlike other pieces. We will get into all that. Okay? Now, for the Americans, for us, we have documented that chess first arrived in the United States, in Americas in 1640. It landed with the Dutch in a place called New Amsterdam, commonly known as New York City. Okay, that was New Amsterdam. And that's the first we have seen of that chess actually arrived here in the Americas. I'll be honest, I don't know when chess arrived in South America. I really have not done any sort of research on that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But you're playing a game that has a lot of history. Okay? So, uh, I had a plan. I want to make sure that I have a plan. Okay, good. One of the things I'm going to make sure is part of playing chess is be able to speak the vocabulary. And so at times, like tonight, these are gonna be the six vocabulary words that I'll be introducing and talking and you guys are gonna be seeing, okay? Um, so if you look, as you're looking at your board, I realize people have set it up. The thing is, is I left most of the boards <coughs> set up wrong, okay? The boards should be set up in a certain way. And so this is why, do you guys notice on TV, chess boards are showing up more in the sets? If you look real closely in a lot of shows, there's more chess boards setting up in the sets. I'll show you a foolproof way. You can tell whether they know what they're doing. As you look at the board, okay, this is a demo board. We'll be using this a lot as far as helping just to illustrate things that we're talking about and then you guys are gonna have a chance to play it out, okay? Now, with the demo board, the demo board's really easy. There's a lanyard here. I can only hang it one way, okay? So, if you could repeat this little mantra after me and you'll always have your chessboard set up right. Ready? Light on the right. Light on the right. Now, do you understand what I'm asking? No. As you look at your board on the right-hand side, there should be a light square on the right-hand side. Yes, that, yep, okay. Yep, so that's, this is the way a chessboard should be properly set up. Yep, okay. So, light on the right. The other thing that will tell you whether or not a chessboard is properly set up. As you look at the chessboard, as you're looking at the board, what do you notice? Letters and numbers. Letters and numbers, okay. Are the letters and numbers in a random pattern? No. 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 So describe for me how the letters and numbers are going. Yes. Well. Okay, yep, yeah, okay, so numbers go up to eight, letters go up to H, okay? Does everybody see that? That means that each one of these squares, folks, on that board has a specific name. Okay, my name is Paul Roberts. It's not Roberts Paul, it's Paul Roberts. The chessboard has a specific, those squares have specific names also. Okay, if you have the, if you are set up properly, then the A, what color is the A1 square? Green. Green. Okay. It's a dark, it should be a dark square. Right? Now, notice how I said the square name, A1. Okay. A refers to this row right here, okay? These squares that go vertically up the, up the board are called files, okay? These that go across here are called ranks. The easiest way to remember it is this. How do we rank people? Usually by number, right? First place, second place, third place, that's a ranking, okay? In some schools, 4.0, 3.5, 3, again, numbers are ranking. 
Also, I know letters are used also, but the way I, at least for me, the way I always remember it is ranks by number, okay? So horizontal, going across the board, these are ranks, all right? Everybody good so far? Okay, diagonals. This is the part that throws players, okay? Diagonals are basically a straight line that's going down at an angle. And so if you look at this then, going this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have seven white diagonals, okay? Going this way, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have, or, well, yeah, six. We have six dark diagonals. Okay, everybody kind of okay with this? All right, great. I'd like you to volunteer for me. Okay, hold on. I'm going to start with her. Can you do me a favor? Th this is part of the demonstration board, okay? And there's little pockets. You can probably kind of see them, okay? So can you find me um, C5, please? Yeah, C5. Okay, did you get it? All right, good job. F2. Okay. How about mm, E5? There you go. Good job. Nice. How about H4? Okay. There we go. This is part, and we will work through this, this is part about chess notation. When, again, when I was playing the game, especially when I learned in middle school, boy, when I learned how to do this, this changed the world for me, okay? Because now I could go into chess books where they would have games published or, get, or chess magazines and I could work them out and see how, what people were thinking. Or I could keep track of my own games and when I lost, which was common, I could then rework the game and see where do I think I made a mistake. And so this is really the literature or the, in, or the writing part of chess, okay? Now, you also, guys, that just went up here, you just did a thing called grid coordinates. Okay? There's going to be the subject that's going to come along in your life that's called algebra and mathematics. Okay? I'll be honest, not my favorite subject. However, when it came to plotting points, I understood it. I understood it because I understood this. Okay? So is everybody good with this? All feeling good? Okay, great. I'm going to ask everybody to close their eyes. Try to visualize the board in your mind. I'm going to give you one hint. And the hint is, is that A1 is a dark square. In your mind, I want your mind to move over four squares to the right, and three squares up. With a show of hands, and you can just put a thumbs up, how many of you think that's a dark square? Put your th hand up. How many of you think that's a light square? Put your hand up, okay? I always ask this, is there anybody that does not know? Because it's okay, because it means your mind's still thinking. Yeah, you, look, <laughs> you checked it out, that's okay. All right, let's check it out. One, two, three, four, light square. Okay? One of the things that will, is hard to do in this game and this is an exercise if you're having a hard time seeing the game. 
This is an exercise to do so that you can see the board. Because what I found as a chess player, and especially as a young chess player, is that I would get too focused on whatever I was doing here and not see what was going on here. Because really what I'd failed to do, and I understand it now, but, and so I guess I'm trying to impart a little bit of, of play wisdom on it, is that I didn't understand that the game of chess is a conversation between me and my opponent. And that I have to understand his perception of what he sees. So the only game that I have on my phone is chess. And a lot of times when I'm stuck, I will actually turn my phone around and look at it from essentially the computer's point of view. And then try to figure out, okay, I think this is what they're doing. Okay? This is the other thing that chess will help you with, is the idea of perception. And also the idea of what other people are saying or talking about is something you can listen to. Doesn't mean you have to agree, but you at least listen. Okay? Everybody good with all this? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, no, I, you know, I know we don't have a lot of time. And so I just want to make sure that I hit things that help out. Okay. So we know that there are eight files, okay? We know there are eight ranks across the board. I was gonna make sure that I said this at say 7.15, but I'm gonna say it now. And for all, well, for anybody that wants to do it. Here's my challenge to you. And you cannot use Google to figure it out, okay? My challenge to you is this. Next Thursday when you come in, how many squares are in a chessboard? Okay. You may want to sit down and work it out on a piece of paper. And what I will make sure is that I bring some prizes with me for those of you that have worked it out. That includes the adults if you want to work it out too. But again, no Google. Because it's really easy in Google, you know. <laughs> Type in how many squares on a chessboard. They will break it down for you. Okay. All right. <laughs> See, I got somebody already working on it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hi. 64. Well, yeah, there's 64, 8 times 8. But, there, but really, isn't there one 8 by 8 square? Mm -hmm. So now there's 65. Okay. So, I, I mean, not to, you know, you're on the right track. All right. Okay. Let's get into some chess. Well, I will start with him. Whoa. Ooh, that got everybody's attention, including mine. There we go. All right. I thought that was going to crash. Okay. Um, the king. He's the whole, you know, if you, for some of you that know something about chess, you know that each play, each piece has a value. Right? Mm -hmm. Pawns are one. I think rooks are five. <coughs> Knights and bishops, I think, are three. The queen is nine. But the king, this is priceless. Because if you lose the king, what happens? You're Game's out over. Game. Yeah, you're out of the game. Okay? Yes? I don't think you can actually lose it. It's you, the other person. Basically what happens is, is your king cannot legally move. You're right, because the king never gets taken off the board. Okay? How do, does everybody know how the king moves? One space at a time. Okay, one space at a time. In any direction? Yes. yes. Okay, so if I have the king right here, it means I can move to all eight of these squares. Okay? Is there any limitations on what the king can do? Okay, so what's a limitation? Got it? Okay. What's a limitation? Move more than one space. Yeah, it can never move more than one space. In one turn. In one turn. Can this... Oops, wrong one. <laughs> can this ever happen? Yes. Actually, no. 
No, it can't. Okay? So, one of the restrictions on their movements, so everybody understands, is that kings can only get this close to each other. Because the king can never deliberately be put into danger. Okay? So, I mean, play it out. So, let's say black has moved here. Okay, let's say white moves here. What's black's next move? Takes the king. Okay, so kings can never put themselves in danger. Okay? But he can't move. You, can ne you cannot move against next to each other. Okay? So the other thing to think about with the king. Because now, sh this is going to become really important because one of the techniques that I'm going to try to show you is at the end of the game or near the end of the game, a lot of times you're left with a king and a pawn. If you can get the pawn down here, you can turn the pawn into a queen. And now all of a sudden the game switches in your favor. How can you move your king to force the other guy out of the way? And there's some techniques I can show you as to how to do that. Okay? Is there any other limitation on the king? Okay, what's the next limitation? Kings do not jump over a piece. Okay, only the knight can do that. Okay? All right, so the king, one square in any direction. However, they can never put themselves in danger. Okay, so they can never, the two kings can never get as close as this, or closer than this, or closer than that. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, you cannot deliberately put your king in danger. Okay, all right, the person that we really want to talk about. <coughs> this is the queen. Okay. Like I said earlier, the Europeans, when they changed the game of chess and changed a bunch of the rules of the game of chess, okay, the queen was the biggest beneficiary. Okay? So, for any of my good chess players that are already chess players, how can the queen move? Yes? Uh, any number of squares, any direction, except they can't move like knights. Okay. So, if I have a queen here, can I move all the way over to here? Yes. <coughs> okay. If the queen is here, can I move all the way over to here? Yes. yes. Okay. If the pawn is here, no. can I move to here? No. 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 I have to decide two things. One, I'm either stopping here or I'm taking the pawn. The way the queen captures, the queen simply moves on to the square where the piece is, you take the piece off. Okay? Can the queen, if the queen is here, in one move, can the queen get there in one move? No. Why not? Because you're, no, hold on, why not? Go start here. Exactly. So the queen is the last part about the queen is it can move diagonally. Okay, any amount of squares it wants as long as it's free. However, the queen may not go. Oh, I'm going to go this and this. So it can't combine the two movements in one. If I want to go there, I have to go. Well, I could go here and then stop. Next turn, I go here, or I can go here and stop, and then I go here. Okay. Okay, that's the, the queen, can it jump over pieces? No. No, it cannot. Okay. the knight can. Right, the knight is the only person that can. Okay. All right, so, we're going to start at the end of the game first. Okay, what I mean by we're going to start at the end of the game first is this. First thing that I want to make sure everybody has a good idea is how do you checkmate and what does checkmate look like? Okay. So, 
in a minute, what I'm going to ask you to do is clear off your boards and just have a queen and a king of same color and a king. Okay? This is what we're going to work on is what's called dream positions. If I could move my king and queen to any place that I want, I have to set it up so the other king is checkmated. Okay? Now, okay, so, yeah, let's see. Ah, we'll, yeah, we'll do it this way. So in other words, if I do this and I do this, is that checkmate? Well, it, can black move? No. Yeah, it is checkmate. Okay? If I do this, is this checkmate? Yes. No. No. Yes. No. no. Okay, for those, all right. For those of you that say no, why is it not? Am I still in check? Yes. Okay. So I'm still in check. If I move here, is this a legal move? No. No. Because no. it's too close to the king. See, the king has, this is the way, honestly, this is the way I learned it. The king has a, a limited force field. And it's limited to these squares right around it. The queen, she has a force field that goes this way, this way, and this way, and that way, okay? And so she can block any movement going that way, all right? So what, I, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do, yeah, most powerful piece, is that I want you to set up as many positions on the board that would be checkmate. You're only having the king and queen of one color and the king of another color, and then you need to set up up positions that are checkmate. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, Please, hey folks, if something I say doesn't make sense, tell me. Okay, all right, so if you would, so what you can set up, we'll spend a few minutes doing this. Yeah, 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 you can move. You are you white? You playing white? Okay, so you. Well, you guys can take turns. I don't care which who does, but you have to set it up so the black king can't move. Yeah, you can do the... Oops, sorry. I got it. Okay. And you want to know the hint? You can't move your king right here. Is if you can get him against a side or in a corner, you got him. Remember, you can set him anywhere. What if you did this and did that? Is that checkmate? Where can show me where black can move? Okay, he can move here one square. He's too close to the king and he's right next to the queen. Okay, he can't move closer, he can't move away. Okay, and he can't move there. So, the idea is in order for this to work, is to either get him in a corner or get him along the edge. Okay, let's see if that helps you out. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I, I'm just going to cut in because I'd like to do one more thing before we go out. Um, please understand when it's a king and a queen versus a king is that the goal is to push the king to a corner or to the side. Once you do that, you, a lot of good things can happen. Would you like to see a technique as to how to do it? Yes. Okay. The one thing that I, I'm kind of ahead of myself, but you guys seem to be getting it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press on. Again, if I say something that doesn't make sense, please tell me, okay? Does everybody understand how, everybody knows that the knight basically can go either two squares up, one square over, right? Or two squares up, one square over. Or the knight can go one square up and then two. Right? Everybody has an idea of that L pattern that it makes. Upside down L, whatever. But everybody got the pattern, right? Okay. So the pattern, if you look at it this way, everybody, can everybody see the knight? The knight is probably, 
the first or second most difficult piece to move. Okay, pawn is either first or second, depending on, just because the pawn can do so many th different things. The knight, one of the things to think about is that the knight right here can land on this square up to over one, can land on this square up two, or up one over two. Okay, I'm starting here. The knight can also land. This thing wants to, doesn't. Which one's not? Sorry. There we go. Okay. So the knight moves in a distinct pattern. Okay. So if the knight, can anybody, can anybody see what the next square would be that the knight could move to? Yeah. Well, hold on. Before you answer, you give me the chess notation. Give me the file and the rank. We're going to see how well we got file and rank. Yes. 4F. 4F. Here's F. One, two, three, four. Exactly right. It moves there. No. From here. Oh, oh. The, okay. I from, from where it was. Yeah, so I'm, that's I'm okay. <laughs> that's okay. Where would be the next place it could move? From the yes. H3. H3. Well, from here, yes, but from this star, from the star, always to focus on the star. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to. C5. C5, one, two, three, four, five. You're absolutely right. It will land there. And what's the one spot we're missing? 4D. 4D or D4. D4, okay? So, again, does everybody see the pattern? Yes. Okay, everybody sees the pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay? This should say a couple of things early about knights. One, they generally want to be in the center of the board. That way you have maximum movement that you can do. Okay? Also, if the knight is sitting on a light square, it's going to end up on a dark square. Another way, to, another way to remember the pattern. If you know, hey, has everybody noticed I use the term pattern a lot? Yeah. Okay, chess is patterns. Okay, I would strongly recommend if you get a chance, there's a wonderful movie called Searching for Bobby Fischer. Okay, it's a true story. He was an American national, ma it was about a kid who became the first really American national master. He had two teachers. One, he had a chess coach. I'm not. Okay, but he had a chess coach. And what the chess coach was teaching him was patterns, patterns, patterns. His other teacher was a guy that played chess on the street. And he learned how to play a game called blitz chess. Blitz chess is just what it sounds like. You generally would have anywhere from maybe five to ten minutes of clock time to play a game. And so literally it is move a piece, hit the clock, move a piece, hit the clock. That's what we mean by blitz chess. Those are his two teachers. He ended up, which is pretty smart of him, combining both ideas and became a national champion in the United States. We in America have not produced a lot of national champions. And we've produced fewer grandmasters. Okay, because I think most of the time, because chess suffers under a big myth. And the myth is, is, oh my God, this game is so complicated, one. Number two, this is a game for only smart people. Okay, number one, let me, here, let me give you guys a little, this is my experience. When I graduated high school, it was way back in the year 1976. Okay, America's bicentennial. Out of a class of 258 kids, I graduated comfortably 120th. Okay, did I work real hard? For some subjects. Did I work real hard in all subjects? No. When I went to college, I ended up graduating with a 3.4, which is a, just about a B minus, I think, or right around that area. When I went to grad school, I had a 4.0. What I'm telling you is, is that as long as you keep working at it, you become smarter. Okay, so is everybody, can they picture the, the, the move? Okay, so 
Here we are going to force the black king where he does not want to go. Okay, let's say it's like this. Here's the setup. Okay, it's white's move. All right. If we think about the idea of a knight's jump away, looking at the king, where would a knight's jump away from the king be? Yes. Uh, F5. Okay, F5. Absolutely. Okay, see what's happening. With the queen here, the queen has limited the king to this area. Okay, plus he's also split it. Okay? All right? All right, I'm going to play black. And hopefully that doesn't fall over on me. Um, I know I don't want to go in the corner. I know I don't want to get to the edge. All right, so I'm going to move here. Okay, where would my knights jump away be now? D6. D6. Knights jump would be right here. Not safe. That's not safe. I think you're a little oh, bit. Yeah, sorry. Yep. How about E6? Mm -hmm. nice job, yeah. Or actually E5, sorry. Knights jump away. Okay. See what I'm doing? I'm slowly constricting the board to move the king to where he doesn't want to go. I don't want to go here. If I go here, what's going to happen? Bad things to me. Okay? However, can I get close enough to attack the queen and draw a stalemate? No. So, I got to keep running. All right, I don't want to go I don't want to go anywhere. Okay, I'm going to go this way. Oh. Am I already a knight's jump away? So the queen stays there. Now the king moves up. If you've noticed, the guy for the guys, we just hang back. We let the queen do all the work. And then we're going to come at the end and say, oh, yeah, we won. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so if I'm black, where do I want to move now? Do I want to go to a corner or an edge? No. No. So let's see. Well, I'm going to move here. Oh, another knight's jump away. So what do I do? Move the king. Mm, let's see, I'm gonna go this way. I don't wanna get in the queen's way. Okay? Now, one thing we haven't talked about too much is stalemate. Stalemate is when, there is, when the king has no, when there are no legal moves left for your opponent. Most of the time it happens when, the, when one guy, person has a king, the other guy has a bunch, and the king can't legally make a move. That's stalemate. So right now, as black, I'm playing for a stalemate. I don't want to lose, but I don't want the other guy to win. So I'm playing for a stalemate. All right? So it's black to move. Any ideas where I should move? Yes? Uh, do you, should move here? Okay, I'll move there. Okay. Where should the queen go? Yes. D5. D5, absolutely. Knights jump away. Constricting it down. Let me start for a second. Does this make sense? Okay, does and seriously, for all for all the young players in here, if it doesn't sink in at the moment, don't worry, it will. Okay, it really will. I don't want to go to the edge, so if I don't want to go to the edge, what's the only place I can move? D7. Yep. It's the only place I can move. Oh. Queens and knight jumps away. No. So what does the king do? No. Move up. Okay. This time I'm going to move a little bit more direct. Because what I'm thinking is, is that the game is going to end here. Okay. And so that means... Eventually, I've got to get my king up here. But I've also got to make sure that I don't stalemate them. Now, for black, any move? Any idea where I should move? Yes. Where should I move? 
What do you mean that way? Help me out. I can move here. Yeah, give me the letter and then the number. B7. B7, did you say, or D? B. Well, if I move B7, I'm right here. The king is not protecting me. The, this king will take me, and the game's over. Okay? So where do you, you, got, you, got, you got an idea? Where, would I, where do you think I should move? B6. We know that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can. Safe? Yeah, that would be safe. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I don't like the move, and it's a legal move, is that by keeping my queen over here, I've limited this king to just this area that he can move in. If I move over here, I'm doing the same thing, except I just let him run this way. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So. I can probably either go, something I hate to do, is I could go here, but okay, I'll go here, because I'm really trying to stay away, you notice, I'm trying really desperately to stay away. I don't want to go here, okay? Knights jump away, what should the king do? Move up one. Okay, so the king's now moving up. Now it's getting really dicey, because by the king being here, I can't, these three squares have now off limits. For the king. Remember, the kings cannot move they next can't. to each other. They the light king can't on the light, well, be on the light square because then they would both be next to each other. But you could yeah. go B7. Okay, B7. No, I can't because then, oh. the queen's here. Oh. <laughs> I have to go here. I have to go here. But you don't want to. I don't want to, but I have to go. Okay, because I have to. Well, no, I should say, I, do I have another choice? Yeah, I can call resign. I'm done. Okay, I don't, okay, because sitting here, I can't go here because the queen's doing that. I can't go here because, I can't, because the queen's cutting that. Plus, I, the king's next to you, Right, and I, so I can't go here. So it leaves me only one place to go. Now things are getting tricky. Mm -hmm. If I make the wrong move, it's stalemate. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... I would recommend that I'm going to do something. I'm going to give up the knight's jump away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Why do you think I would do that? He can't go, he can't go this way. I can't come back out. The queen has restricted me to these squares right here. Yeah, that's the okay? move. So now, yeah, well... So now, I know I definitely don't want to go here, right? The corner scared the daylights out of me. All right, so I'll go this way. Okay? The king can get you. Well, yeah, because now the king starts coming across. Yes. And I go this way again. All right, now, hold on. This is where I'm, it's getting tricky. Okay? Because if I make the wrong move, I stalemate him. Does anybody see the right move I should make? Well, hold on. Let everybody think for a second. Do you see the right move I should make? Wait, the king or the queen? Um, more than likely, it's probably the queen has now got to step in. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, hold on. Let's, let's give people a chance to think about this a little bit. Can it, while people are while people are looking at this, put your hands down just for one moment, and then you put it right out. I just want to draw attention to something. Can you guys describe to me as you're looking at the board what's the thinking you're doing? Okay, let, I'm going to take a wild guess. Ready? Here we go. One, you're analyzing the situation. Okay, wild guess. I think I'm right. Two, are you evaluating options? You should be, because you're based on what you know for movement, what am I going to do next? So you're evaluating your options. Okay? This is the beauty of this game. Okay? All right, so for everybody that had their hand up, where should I go? White should end this right now. Where can I go? I know you got it? A3. By who? Queen. 
Okay, the queen moves here, a3. Yep, because these square, this square is gone, this square is gone, this square is gone, this square is gone, this square is gone. So. Is that the only move? No. No, I have the one. Could you have gone c5? C5? How about, I was on, I was here on b. If you did b5, that would be, that would work. Because the king is protecting the queen, queen's delivering check. And the queen yeah, there's a, there's a variety of moves that we can make at that point, okay? One of the simple things that we ask teachers to remember when we're doing this is that in chess we call this face-to-face. -face. The two kings are looking at each other, okay? The queen checks from the side or a rook or something else checks from the side. Hi, question. Um, can you show what move would have produced a stalemate instead of... Oh, the okay. What move would have produced a stalemate? It was here, and I was here. This would have produced a stalemate if the king moved up. Okay, because now it's Black's turn to move. Can't move here. Can't move here, can't move here, can't move here, can't move here. Stalemate. So it's stalemate because you can't move, but you also don't have a check, right? Ex thank you. The whole thing about stalemate is, is that if, the ki if you do not check the king, it's not checkmate. Okay? I have a book of puzzles at home, and so we have a chessboard going in my house, and so I'll set up the puzzle for my wife. And I set up a couple of puzzles where it looked really inviting. And so, unfortunately, because my wife is really just learning how to play, she went for the real inviting. And I said, geez, that's too bad because neither one of us win. You just stalemated me. Okay, so stalemate, is, stalemate happens is when there's no check. And then the king can't legally move. Okay? All right, I have thrown a lot of stuff at you. Okay, what I would like you to do before we wrap up, can everybody set up their boards? Yeah, everybody set up their boards, please. Do you have any questions? Because one of the things I want to make sure is when we get close to finishing for the night, is that I want to make sure that everything that we've talked about, there's no lingering questions. Question, yes. What we're going to do next week, the plan is, is that we'll do, we'll work with rooks and pawns, and then bishops and pawns, and then queen and pawns. Because pawns, pawns are one of the more, di they're overlooked, but they do a lot of cool things. Matter of fact, they're the only piece on the board that if you can get it to the other side of the board, you can transform it into a knight, a bishop, a rook, or another queen. That's why when I had someone come up to me and say, Mr. Roberts, there's an extra queen. Yeah, these are set up as if we were playing a tournament. You would have an extra queen. That's usually what people do the pawns for. So the queen versus pawn is actually, it's called the mad queen. And we'll get into that more, but it will help you working the pawns and working the queens. Like I said, I think to him, next week, uh, tonight is the only night that I'm going to speak as much as I've spoken. After this, it's, you're going to be focused on individual, on mini games, and then we'll get to the point where we can do large scale. Okay? Any other questions? No. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. At the very beginning, I said to everybody, I'm willing to do this for the next eight, seven Thursdays. If you would like to join six o'clock Thursday night, I'll be here. And I'd love to have everybody come just so we can go through the whole game. And so everybody feels confident, okay? All right, if, if you would please, if someone could just grab some of the pieces and, the, and mats so we can just kind of pick up for the library.